Sometimes written as leeward mark, we normally say leeward mark, and it's always it's also the downwind mark. Anyone else know any other terms for it? Bottom mark. So we've got the same four boat zone rule as we had for the windward mark. Okay, so it's the same story. Normally when we're racing these boats in regattas, we normally have a gate. Wind's coming down here guys, there's a wind direction. We normally have a gate. Do we know why we have a gate? Yeah, separate the fleet so it doesn't get congested. So, no, so everyone's not trying to come around one mark. So I'll just put that aside. We'll come back to gate a little bit later. We'll just talk about the, uh, the four boat length rule. So it's the same story if you're coming down here and you establish your overlap as, you, as you're coming into the zone. You've established it as you come into the zone. You're coming down to this mark, you've chosen to go to this mark of the gate, the other, mark, other gate's down here. We're just concentrating this one to start with. This guy has got mark room rights. And the same story, if they separate through a gust or something and then he comes back, he maintains that right all the way to the mark and around. All right, so 5-5, five, five, you get down here, it'll be calling mark room. And this guy has to give him mark room. Now, the other thing that's very important to know is Mark room overlaps. He has to give this guy, this guy has to give him, this guy has to give him, but he's essentially, this guy has to give all those boats mark room. So he's going to end up a long way out here. And that's how much room he has to give. So you need to know when you're coming down that mark, if you're four boats out, you've really got to be four or five boat lengths away from that mark to let all these guys through. And sometimes there, there are four boats just, there. Just understand that if you happen to be out here, like sometimes you can see it in the harbour there, yeah. you know, got four wide, this guy has to go really wide. You've really got to exaggerate how wide you're going. Go wide because there's probably a good chance these two are going to have a little bit of a coming to. But just remember that overlap rule. That applies at the windward mark and the leeward mark. So let's just talk about a bit of a strategy. So if you come around here, this guy comes around here, he gets up onto, uh, so say the rest of the fleet's coming down there like that, first guy's come around. Now if he, if he tacks, got taxi on, starboard, 50% chance. <laughs> starboard, he's on starboard. He was on port before he tacked, correct. So, so, okay, so what tacks this guy on? And who has right away these two boats? Three threes windward boat. Very good. This guy, what's, what, what, what tacks he on? Just say port, you would have got it right. Oh. <laughs> He's on port. And uh, who's got right away those two? Why? He's on starboard. The other guy's with the boat. He's got to give way. He's on port. Tack. He, he's got to give way. So, oh, got no right. You could come around this mark, hook onto starboard, start hooking across there. But it's not advisable. Unless you're sailing in a really crack fleet and you know these guys coming down here are all very, very experienced racing guys. Because you're, you're asking for trouble just sailing like that in the, in the beginner's fleets. These guys don't know what tack they're on sometimes. They don't realise they're with a boat. And also, if you're calling rights, you say 55's on starboard. It's also difficult when you're inexperienced for these guys to visually work out how to dodge you. You'll see when you're running your boat down, if you get beside your boat, sometimes it's a bit hard to see how close you are to the other boats, etc. So my advice to you is, from a strategic point of view, is take a few boat lengths out there. If this is the favourite tack you want to get onto, have a look where the boats are, make sure you're clearing the fleet. Otherwise you'll high chance of having a tangle and it'll ruin your day, particularly if you're winning and you smack into them. Okay, so a lot of the common 
errors I see when we're rounding like this is that we get we get boats that are out here, and there's been there's been no mark room having to be given because there was no overlap. This guy was further ahead, but if this guy happens to go deep and come up close to the mark, as he's going deep down there, a lot of guys think they can sail through there because there's a hole, there's a gap. Even though we haven't even you know we didn't even have to talk about overlap, uh, you know, mark room. And they just go whack into them, sort of like that, you know. It happened. It happened last a couple of weeks ago when we were at Springfield on the other mark, and I, I went down through the mark. I went deep down there so I could come back tight on that mark. So I've gone deep and I've come tight. Another boat's come rocking, rocking in here, <laughs> and it's just ploughed into me. So just be careful when you're coming round. Did you have mark room? Was mark room established? If you had no mark room rights, if you hadn't established it, you got to basically keep care of those boats in front of you. You're coming round here, and you hook around there, and you get onto starboard. It's doubly dangerous to hook across there. What tax 44 on? Port, port, port. right, good. So he's got uh, so between 44 and 22, he's got right away. 2-2, two, two. I should be saying 2-2, two, two, not 22. 2-2, two, two. why has 2-2 two, two got right away? 44 has right away over 2-2, two, two. and he's on port. And what's he on? What about this guy? So who's got right away between 3-3 three, three and 4-4? Four, 3-3, four? Three, three. he's on starboard. Doesn't matter, he's on starboard. Okay, so this, this is a common, this is a common lack of understanding yet. That's why it's dangerous to cross this fleet. Because you in 3-3 three, three don't realise you're on starboard and you've got rights. Or you in this boat here doesn't realise he's on starboard and he's got rights. So your, your hierarchy of the rules are port and starboard first. Yep. You're on starboard, you're king, whether you're going upwind or downwind. And then the weather boat is an extra. So once again, when you come around this mark, if it's the first time round and it's a crowded fleet coming through here, go wide. Look at where the fleet is, go wide. So yep, I'll t I, I really want to be on that other tack, but I'm going to wait till I can clear them. You'll see the really good guys will try. Will sail through that fleet. If there's good guys coming down and a good guy going round, they pretty much sail through the fleet. And these guys will all talk to one another. They'll say, go above me, go, be, go below me, hold your course. It's that talking thing again. We've got, to, we've got to be communicating. So if you choose to go through there, you might have to go through there because the finishing line's just here. And you're really desperate to win that sheep station. So... You may have to go through there, but if you choose to go through there, the onus is on you to start talking and say to 22, for example, I'll go above you and, and steer, and steer, show him what you're doing. Or I'll go below you. Go below you gets pretty hard because as soon as you turn down, you accelerate, and uh, you end up sort of heading that direction. So, But it's something you've got to practice, practice <coughs> talking. Now, when we do our racing this afternoon, we're going to do downwind starts. So we're going to start downwind. That means there'll be about 20 boats hitting the gate at the same time. So here's your chance to uh, practice mark rounding. Really good question, Lynn, and we'll just we'll do that one. So let's just talk about slowing the boat down and a couple other things as we're coming downwind. So we're coming down to the mark. 44 is in good shape. He, 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 four fours, he's going to have mark room. He's um, this guy didn't have an overlap coming in. He's in good shape, right? This guy over here, nine eight, going. Geez, I'm going to have to go wide here. You know, I'm going to have to go wide. So Lynn sailing ninety eight. So Lynn says, I want to slow down. So I'm going to pull my sheets in. I'm going to slow the boat down because I want to end up. I want to end up behind, up over here. I want to end up over here. I'm going to follow the fleet around because that's going to be a pretty short course for me rather than having to come out here. But you want to make sure there's a bit of a gap because if there's a coming together, you've got to be able to dodge it. That's how you slow your boat down. Now, if you're coming down here like this, and you see this quite often, 20, 22 who did not have an overlap coming into the zone, therefore has no mark right, gets a gust of breeze, ends up 
with an overlap like so. Established within the zone. Does 2-2 two -two have any mark rods? No, that's good. Everyone's everyone shaking it. No. So what's 22 going to do? He's got two choices. He can pull his sheets in, slow the boat down and wiggle around, get behind this guy. Or he has to come around like that. Well, it depends what else is up here. Depends how many boats are up there, because if you do that again and you end up the outside boat again, you'll be doing it again. <laughs> and again. So slow the boat down, get behind, or come around like that. Now, what normally happens, and I really don't want to see this when we're practicing, but this boat tries to shove his nose in. 4-4 four, four will be shouting at 2-2. Two, two. That's not cricket, old boy. And they'll have a collision, or if they don't, he'll hit the mark, or something will happen, and it's messy. So somewhere down here, once you get into that four-boat zone, as you're coming down there, you need to be thinking, what's going to happen here? If you've come in there, you didn't have an overlap, and you're right behind that guy. Two twos, just come into that zone right behind there. Which way is two two going to go? Is he going to go this side or that side? This is this what you've got to be thinking about? You don't want to get yourself trapped. Yeah. So you say, look, I didn't have an overlap. I can't establish mark room. So coming up here is a waste. Is really going to get me in trouble because I could get trapped and go around there. Have to have to starboard. do that, eh? The green boat's on starboard. Green boat's on starboard. Yep, he is. But he's they haven't overlapped. I don't think yet. If this is me. I'm starting to head that way, particularly if I'm going a little bit faster. You know, if I've been catching up, I say, oh, there's a good chance I'll get beside this guy. I'll just keep coming out wider there, and we'll just go down to the mark like that. And I'll give him his mark room. I'll jive across here at some point in time. Around we go. The thing is to be thinking about it up here. Don't get right down to the mark and go, oh, geez, we're in trouble here. The other choice you've got if you're coming down here like this, and your boat number 55, even though the yellow mark might be the favoured one to go around. We'll talk about the favoured mark in a second. Five five might say, too crowded here, I'm going over here. I'm going for clear, I'm going for clear wind. Uh, there's a couple of blokes in there I know are going to hit the mark. Even though it's the favoured side, by the time I come through here, I reckon I'll have broken even or maybe even made some gains. So that's your other call up here. You're starting to say to yourself, which gate am I, which mark am I going to go around? Because you should be saying it right up here somewhere. Which mark am I going to go around? And if you see a big crowd coming here, your choice might be to go here. So let's just talk about which is the favoured mark. The favoured mark to go around is always going to be the windward mark. Because you're going to be the windward of the boats that go around the other mark. So you're going to be the windward. If we just exaggerate this a bit, Switch, just switch the wind around a bit more so you're almost reaching, you know, you're on a broad reach coming up to the mark. You come up, go around that mark and tack. This guy's going to do the same thing. Which boat's leading? 8-6. He's that far to windward. He's that far ahead. He's a, he's a width of the gate ahead. So when, when you're coming down on this, when you're running down like that, if your boom's out this side, this is a mark to go to, as far as the wind shift's concerned. You may choose to go around this one because it's close to the bank and you know you're going to get a lift off there. Like at Springfield last, last Gary, it was all over the shop, wasn't it? I didn't know which one to go around. I tried both, and nothing worked. But um, you may choose, you might tell, oh, there's wind pressure on this side of the course. I know that I'm disadvantaged here, but I'm going to come up here, then I'm going to get this lift and I'll shoot across the flute. A couple other things I'll say to you about Leward Mark is I've said, um, you know, the further, the further the marks are away from you, the more defensive you should be. So I feel if the, if the Leward Mark's like from here back to halfway down the pool, it's hard to see there. So just say to yourself, I don't know whether I've got an overlap, I don't know whether I'm going to have an overlap, I'll make sure I can see my boat, I'll stick behind the fleet. Right? I'm not going to squeeze up and then start yelling out, mark room, mark room. No, you haven't got it because it's very hard to see. So you, you act defensively. If the lured mark's really close, 
like at Wellington Point there, Sovereign Lake, the Lewin Mark's like 10 metres away. You can see it very clearly. So you can watch your boat and see what's going on. So the further the marks are away, the more defensive you should be. The more knowing that it's very hard to judge a full boat length and you'll have a debate with someone whether you've got it or not and very hard to see the mark sometimes. So you need to have a bit more room around that mark. Ooh, walk down to it. Walk down to it. Oh, Basil. Favourite student, top of the class. Yep. <laughs> walk down. Always walk down. But if sometimes you can't, like at Paradise, you just can't walk down because you've got to walk over water and there's only one of us here that can do that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the bigger the breeze, the bigger the gaps. Just keep wide. When you're coming down here on this run, if, if some of the boats are nose diving, just keep right out of the way. Because you know one of them's going to spin around in front of you. One will, might spin at the mark. Just dry, you know, steer safely. Just take yourself around the mark. Big breeze. Just get around and say, oh, just got around. That's great. So one other thing when you're rounding the marks, just as a, as a strategy, there's two ways you can go around the mark. You can cut the mark close there and that means you go, you end up wide out there like so. Or you can come wide like that and then come back at the mark like that. So in most cases I find it better to go a bit wider and cut back on the mark. That stops anyone thinking that they can get through there. And if this guy follows you around, you've come close to the mark, you can get your boat up high. It's it's really a defensive thing that he can't get his um, can't get his bow up above you because you've gone pretty close to that mark. So he basically got to follow. If you go wide around, if you go this way, like that, you watch. This guy can come wide like that. You're hard on the breeze. Come up hard on the breeze. He can actually get his nose up on you, and then he's controlling you because you can't tack in his water. Remember, you can't tack in his water. So he's controlling you. He, he can take you over there, tack when he wants to. And if you come back to the finishing line, he's pretty much got you. I'll, I'll have a look up the definition for you. But my understanding is as soon as, this, as soon as your boat transoms past that mark, the mark's no longer relevant. If someone sticks their nose in, then the way you view that is you take the mark away. Yeah. So if someone sticks their nose in there like that and clocks you, well, who's got right away? He's aware of the boat. Yeah. Huh. you got no rights. It's not a good tactic for him to even try that. He's uh -huh. got, abso got absolutely no rights. They do. Hey? They do. I know they do. Yeah. We had a case um, in one of those inner club races where there was hardly any wind. And, I, and the other guy was up here. And I just really went wide around that mark because I don't know whether the wind's going to change or we're going to drift back on the mark or whatever. So I went right, right around that mark like that. So this guy never had mark room. He just sails in there and sails straight into me. He said... Uh, Oh, you tacked inside the, you know, in the zone. I said, the zone, what are you talking about? We're past the mark. The mark's not relevant. You're with a boat. <coughs> Keep clear. So just remember that. Once, you, once you're clear of the marks, take the mark away for the rules. Port and starboard, weather boat. Bye.